Greetings, welcome to House to House Discipleship Institute. I am your host, Elder Josh Malara, bringing you an in tune with the triune. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here once again to serve you, to esteem you better than myself. Um, as we said last week, or I said last week uh, when I was researching the scriptures, is that you are the temple, the tabernacle of the Father. Uh, the tabernacle of the Father, we can actually see that our identity is hidden within Mashiach. It's hidden within Christ, as it says in the Greek. If you turn to Colossians chapter 3, uh, just recapping a little bit on identity and uh, uh, what I was trying to explain to you about the tabernacle is that many of us, when we come into the kingdom, we actually uh, believe that we go to church, a building, believing that the kingdom of God is hidden in the church when that is partially in your in your outer court dna that you have not begun to mature yet you didn't know the distinction between meklaka maklaketh and marismos which is the dividing of uh the soul and spirit by using the word we haven't come to that realm but today i want to help you out a little bit is that when you mature more you're going to see that in the outer court there's the church realm. In the holy court, there's the kingdom realm. And in the holy of holies, there's the sonship realm. That's where you and I both are the Echad in Hebrew, which is one with the Father, seated in heavenly places and waiting until the Father makes our enemies our footstool. We never touch the earth. We don't get to touch the earth because he says your enemies are your footstool. Your enemies are already at your feet. You just got to be seated and remain seated in heavenly places. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, If then you were raised with Mashiach, seek those things which are above, which Mashiach is, sitting at the right hand of our Father, Yahuwah. Now, as remember what I told you is that Yeshua, our identity, is hidden in Christ Jesus, or Yeshua HaMashiach, Mashiach Yeshua. The thing about it today is that we always say that, oh, we are dead in Christ, dead in Mashiach, but he is alive in us. Therefore, our identity is hidden in Mashiach. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, which says, For you are dead and your life is hidden in, <clears throat> in Christ. And then if you go uh, tune on and uh, continue to seek out a matter a little bit more, you're actually going to be seeing, well, if, our, if we're dead in him and he's alive in us and we our identity is hidden within him, it sounds a little bit complex. Well, no, not really, because if the Father sent his Son to die on the cross of Calvary to manifest and to restore back the image and likeness of our Heavenly Father today in this day and age to manifest the sons that the earth is groaning for, then we got to seek out why our identity is hidden within the second Adam, the quickening Adam, the quickening Ruach, or in Hebrew, spirit. So let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and I'm going to turn there and I'm going to uh, help you to show why your identity is hidden in Mashiach. You're a son. You just got to learn to <laughs> let your soul rest, let your soul labor in the scriptures on the Sabbath day of rest, honor Yahuwah's name, and let Mashiach, the Christ in you, the hope of glory, manifest himself out of you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's turn there right quick. I want to just... 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And what I'm trying to show you is that this is speaking to me because we're coming back to an age where we need to research everything that's been given to us from day one. What do I mean by that? The minute we receive Yeshua or Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we need to go back to the beginning. We need to teshuv or return back to dust and go back to the beginning of who we are, which is already in the Berashith, Genesis, which is the first book of the, the scriptures, the Bible. But what's interesting is that as we grow up, we mature more, we begin to have a spiritual hunger to to just touch the Father, to ask Him and to seek Him and to say, Father, what is it that is causing me to seek you more? Why is it that every time I read the scriptures, it just becomes more alive and more where I become more in tune with you that I begin to seek you and desire you more daily? Why is it that I feel like I need to become the Word in this day and age? Why is it that I need to become the Word made flesh today? Every time you read the scripture, you read it, but you can't just read it and to say, okay, 
you know, chapter 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says, but know this, that in the last day perilous times will come. Well, why is it coming to this day? Why are perilous times coming to this day? The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons, one, but here's the reason why we need to become the word made flesh. Let's scroll all the way down to verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of Yahuwah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, highlight this one in your scriptures and meditate it. That the man of Yahuwah may be completely, thoroughly furnished, equipped for every good work. Now the furnish, furnishing right there, he's talking about right there in your tabernacle, in your identity, hidden in Mashiach, you have to be a man of or woman of Yahuwah, willing to be fully furnished, fully equipped, understanding every furniture piece from the outer core all the way to the Holy of Holies. And we do so, but the thing is, sometimes we get veered off by doctrine and the doctrine of man, but not the doctrine of the Father. The doctrine of Father is Ruach and truth, spirit and truth. The doctrine of man is to justify the scriptures just to verify that the Bible is canon. But if you go back to it, let's go all the way back to Genesis. Bereshith chapter 1, this speaks about right there. In the Bereshith, there is the Olive Tav, the Father and Son. The Father is seated in heavenly places. You and I are seated in heavenly places as the Son who is dwelling in us and as we continue to be seated. And I've been saying this more and more. We need to learn to come into a place of rest. You and I are the tabernacle, the fully, fully furnished peace. And where do we begin our journey in the tabernacle? Turn with me to Exodus, 25, Exodus chapter 25 verse 8. And as you begin to see Exodus chapter 25 verse 8, what is the first furniture piece that you begin to see right there? It's the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, that is where we first began our journey. And if you see it today, it's first spirit. We always say, oh, first the natural, first the spirit. That is true to a certain time and season in our life when we are walking out the scriptures. But if you begin your ascension process, you're going to have to learn to understand that Within the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies, you were first with the Father before you manifested on the day you were born. I was born August 4th, 1990. That was the day I manifested here on earth to complete the will and manifest first the kingdom of our Father and then to complete the will of our Father. Amen? So if you go to Exodus 25, this is verse 8. It says, and this is who you are. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. And in the scriptures, it says that Yahuwah inhabited, inhabitants, uh, inhabits the praises of his people. When you begin to, going back to our archives in H2HD guy, there are seven steps to the throne. You can take a look into our lower thirds right here. Uh, there are seven steps to the throne. I'll link the, uh, the video in, uh, in the bio. And I would just want to show you this. When you see those, you and I see that we are worshipers. There are seven steps to the throne, beginning with <laughs> Toda, Yada, Barak, Hallel, Zamar, Shabak, and Tehillah. As you see right here, they're on the board to my right. Those are furniture pieces that you and I both become. We become prayer. We become the supplication where people cannot stand in the presence of the, our Father because of His esteem, His weight, His glory. We become the glory producers standing in the gap. We become intercessor prayers, but we don't have our own ministry. We got to learn to stand in the gap and bridge the gap between man and Yah, man and Yahuwah, man and, as you would say, the Lord. But I don't use the Lord because that's a title. So if you own land, you become a landlord. If you use the title or the descriptive term God, you're actually calling him by a descriptive term, but that's not his name. So if you go on a little bit more, if you look at verse 10, it says, And they shall make an ark of, the of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. So he's showing you right now, that in the mind of the Father, in the glory, in the presence of our Father, 
in the Ark of the Covenant where we decide and remain to ch- and choose to remain to be at rest, he's showing you that he was al- we already were in his mind, in his thought, in his heart. We just got to think and it, we have a tendency is that when we go to Bible colleges and I myself went to a Bible college, not to become and to be called a doctor, but to meet my spiritual father. That was the goal was because I was seeking out father somebody to father me in the faith and that's where we came to now we are uh, seated in heavenly places we are thinking heavenly minded and not intellectually and i know what i'm saying because there are times my intellect gets in the way of the spiritual reality of who i am in the father that's why we got to think on things above and not things below you know the intellect realm is the outer court realm And man is always trying to find God through intelligence and never by relationship. That's why we have to stand as the sons, a fully furnished son that knows all the furniture pieces in the outer court, the brazen altar, the brazen labor. That's why we're all coming down to lower level. As I said in the beginning of the Intune series, we are learning to ascend and then descend to ascend more so we understand our piece our furniture pieces with more depth and more clarity in the outer court there's the brazen altar where we repent teshuv return to dust there's the brazen labor where we wash ourselves with the washing of the water of the word then there's the pillars the doors where we become perfect we're learning to mature and to become mature for the work and task at hand and then there's the br- <laughs> the table the um, the table of showbread where we break bread our the exchange of wills our will for the will of our Father for the will of Yeshua in us. But first, before that, let me <laughs> let me go back. You actually have to go to the menorah to understand the illumination of the feasts of the Father hidden in Leviticus 23, and then go to the table of showbread. From the table of showbread, then you go to the uh, altar of incense where you make and you become prayer. You become the prayer of the saints. You become the prayer that you are desiring to be, which is to be the we are son of the Father, fully matured, fully furnished. And it's interesting how 2 Timothy 3.17 has that word, fully furnished. So what was Apostle Paul teaching Timothy? He was teaching him the Torah, the tabernacle, but the problem right there, if you count it carefully, he had a little bit of Greek in him. He had a little bit of abstract thinking, but it wasn't concrete Hebrew. He needed to teach him back to go back to Torah, to go back to the first five books, to go back to the first fivefold, the true fivefold, the shepherd of your heart. That is the first fivefold, the first order we're going back to. That's why today I just want to say this to you and I. We need to turn back to Shuv. Go back and turn to dust because the way we were doing it was all by dead works. We were maturing and equipping saints with the false five holds with an abstract mindset, but never to fully persuade and fully convict uh, this, <laughs> the person of their sin, but convince the son of his righteousness in Mashiach. We need to learn to renew our minds to the things of the Father. Let's go to Romans 12, 2, and I'm going to just keep it right there. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, for all of us to read. But before that, let's turn to verse 1, why we need to become sons. Verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies. Oh, so mercies was in the Holy of Holies crying out for us. Of Yahuwah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to yahuwah which is your reasonable service your worship and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good acceptable and perfect will of yahuwah see there's the uh the tabernacle right there the good acceptable and perfect will of yahuwah of our father that's why i want you and i today to say this word you uh right now i teshuv i repent and turn back to dust i cannot do this lifestyle of discipleship training and i cannot live without yahuwah no more that's why i return back to dust and i repent because i want to do it according to the stature of what was first written in genesis 1 1 in the better sheath with the father and the son 
The son cannot uh, do anything and say anything without the father without the father first saying and doing what he is uh, already seen and done and completed in the work in you and I today or this morning or this evening, whatever time frame you're watching. So until we see each other again, just want to say this. Thank you for tuning in to H2HDI. Continue to like, share, and subscribe for more uh, in tune to come. Don't forget we have our Let Isha Speak series where we have Prophet Seer Virginia Gonzalez or her Hebrew name Betula uh, encouraging women uh, who are women, wives, and warriors to always read the scriptures, read the Psalms, read the Proverbs, and always put a smile on their face. Amen? Because you are glory producers too. And we have our terabytes uh, that's founded in the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 3 which teaches you and encourages you on how to become a threat, a terror, and a revenger to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And don't forget our Sabbath live stream from 12 p.m. to uh, noon to 1 p.m. Uh, right now we are on the uh, series of uh, repentance from dead works or repenting or repentance to shuv. We need to turn back to dust and remember that we are nothing without the Father, but we are more than conquerors is what he called us. Amen. So until we see each other again, just want to say this to you and I, Shalom, Shalom, Bibaruk, we're blessed in Hebrew. And until we see each other again, Shalom.